Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Qur'an, in the 35th ayah of the 5th surah of the Qur'an, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, ittaqu Allah, wabtaghu ilayhi al-wasila, wa jahilu fi sabilihi la'allakum tuflihun. He says, O you who believe, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and seek out the means to Him, and strive in His path in order for you to be successful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in this ayah, Iman, the verb is amanu, the mustar or infinitive is Iman. He mentions taqwa, Iman and taqwa. And then he mentions a third thing, al-wasila, the means of arrival, the means of approach to Him, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This word al-wasila is related linguistically to the term tawassul or intermediation. You see there may be deficiencies in our level of Iman, there may be deficiencies in our level of taqwa. So Allah commands us, وَبْتَغُوا إِلَيْهِ wasila. This is a fi'l amr. This is a command to, to fill in, as it were, our deficient gaps of iman and taqwa by seeking out the means to him. When you apply to university, our young people know this all too well. Unless you have a 1600 SAT and a 36 ACT and a 4.3 GPA, you will need help in the form of letters of recommendation, help from people that have authority and rank in academia. It's similar in the spiritual realm. We need all the help we can get from those things nearest and dearest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all practice tawassul at some level. We read the Qur'an. As one of my teachers said, the Qur'an is not Allah and the Qur'an is not you. Reading the Qur'an, Qira'atul Qur'an, is a means of drawing near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a wasila. Now some commentators say about this ayah, the means of approach mentioned in this ayah, that it is al-anbiya, it is the prophets, more specifically Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, our master Muhammad, peace and blessings of God be upon him. The means of approach to our Lord, the Ba'alawi Sadat of Yemen, they recite a beautiful benediction upon the Prophet ﷺ. They say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Oh Allah, bless our Master Muhammad. Miftahi babi rahmatillah. The key to the gate of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you think of the analogy of the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as being like a walled city with a gate, and many claim to have the key. Many claim to have the key to the city of rahmah. But the true key is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi alayhi wa sallam. The ulama mentioned, the mufassirin of the Qur'an mentioned that a waft, a delegation of Christians from Najran, they came into Medina to Munawwara and they dialogued with the Sahaba. And the Christians said that we worship Isa alayhi salam out of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of love for God. This is a sababun nuzul according to many of the mufassirin of Ayatul Imtihan in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands his Prophet sallallahu alayhi alayhi wa sallam to tell them, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبْ Say, if you really love Allah, you have to have ittiba of me. You have to follow me. You see. So, you don't demonstrate your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by worshipping His creation. Yuhbibkumullah. Then will Allah love you and forgive you your sins. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not just miftahi babi rahmatillah. He is miftahi babi mahabbatillah. He is the key to the gate of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Kullu al-ansab tanqati' yawm al-qiyamati ghayra nasabi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, every type of lineage is, is cut off and severed on the yawm al-qiyamah, except my lineage and those who are connected to me. So the righteous Ahl al-Bayt, as well as those who are connected to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, through love, the ittisal of mahabba, connection through love, Think of Salman al-Farisi. He's not from the family of the Prophet sallallahu He's not even an Arab. The Muhajireen claimed him. The Ansar claimed him. And the Prophet sallallahu claimed him. Salman minna ahl al-bayt. Salman is from us, the people of the house. Why? Out of love. He loved the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu loved him as well. We are told in traditions that when the Prophet sallallahu was shown Jannah, he said, amani fa bilalun. The Prophet ﷺ said, when I was in paradise, when I was shown a vision of paradise, I, I heard footsteps in front of me, and behold, there was the, fits, the footsteps of Bilal ibn Rabah al-Habashi, the Abyssinian, beloved to Allah, 
because he was beloved to the Messenger of Allah. This is called the ittisal, the connection of mahabba, of love, and is open to everybody. Ask your Lord by means of his beloved, and you will not be rejected. Honor the beloved of your Lord, and you will be honored. This is how it works. There is an amazing hadith. Some call it a controversial hadith. I don't see the controversy. Amazing hadith. You'll, you'll find it in Ibn Majah. Imam al-Tirmidhi records it, narrated by Uthman ibn Hunayf. Over 15 masters of hadith, her father of hadith, have explicitly said that the following hadith is rigorously authenticated and sound, including Bukhari, and Nasai, al bayhaqi Al-Tabarani, you name it, etc., etc. Abu Nu'im, that a man who was Darir al-Basar, a man who was blind, he came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, Ya Rasulullah, Udu'ullah Ali and Yu'afiyani. He said, O oh, Messenger of God, supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that he might heal me. The Prophet ﷺ said to him, If you have patience, it is better. But if you want me to, I'll supplicate. He said, Ud'u, supplicate. So the Prophet ﷺ told him to go and make an excellent wudu. Go make a beautiful wudu and pray two rak uh, rakas of, of rak'atain, two units of prayer. And then say the following, Allahumma inni as'aluka wa atawajjahu ilayka bi Muhammad, Nabiyur Rahmah. Oh Allah, I ask you and I turn to you by means of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, the Prophet of Mercy. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, ittaqullah wa abtaghu ilayhi al-wasila. The Prophet sallallahu this is what the Prophet told him. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he's ma'asum, he cannot make an error. And the Quran says, take a wasila. The Prophet sallallahu is the walking Quran. Kana khulukuhu al-Quran. His prescription to the blind man was based upon the Quran as he took himself as the wasila. There's a hadith in Bukhari. This is one of my favorite hadith. I mention it all the time. Uh, it's a ajib, beautiful hadith. A man came to the Prophet sallallahu after the congregational prayer. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, inni asabtu haddan. He said, Oh Messenger of God, I have, um, I have breached the parameters of permissibility in the Sharia. Fa'aqim uh, fiya kitab Allah. So punish me according to the book of Allah. Now imagine how difficult this must have been for this man. Imagine how afraid he was, how embarrassed he was. Imagine him weeping in a state of absolute brokenness. He comes to the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophet asks him an interesting question. He didn't, uh, he didn't expect such a question. He said, Alaysa qad salayta ma'ana? Didn't you just pray with us? And he said, Naam. He said, Yes. The Prophet said, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ غَفَرَ لَكَ ذَنْبَكَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed has already forgiven your sin. This man brought his sin to the door of mercy, and the door was opened. Well, some might say, well, the, the Prophet was alive when that happened. Now, first of all, according to the aqidah, or the sound aqidah, the Prophet is hayyun fi qabrihi sharif. The Prophet sallallahu is alive in his noble grave. There's a hadith of Abu Dawood. It's a good hadith, hadith, strong hadith, Hassan hadith. Ma min ahadin yusallimu alayya illa radallahu alayya. Ruhi hatta arudna alayhi salam. Whenever someone sends salams upon me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returns my soul to me so that I might respond to him. Imam al Suyuti says this doesn't literally mean the soul of the Prophet is going in and out of his body, but his consciousness returns. A heightened state of awareness returns to him. You might say, How is that possible? Mil tens of millions of Muslims uh, doing salawat ala nabi and, and, he, and he hears this and responds to it, you're making him, him into a, a deity. No, no one's doing that. No one's ascribing to him equality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think of a tweet. If you have a million followers, you send a tweet in one second, a million people see it. That's in this world. The unseen realm is beyond our imaginative limitations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that the shuhada are not dead. Bal ahya walakina tush'arun. The shuhada are alive, but you don't perceive it. Who is better, a shuhada or Habibullah? Who is better, the martyrs or the beloved of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam? The bottom line is, our ibadat, our taqwa, our iman is deficient. We need to take the means of approach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to appeal to Allah's beloved and nothing and no one is more beloved. Nothing and no one is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is khayr al-khalqillah. This is sound aqidah. Khayr al-khalqillah. He's the best of creation. He's better than Jannah. He's better than Jannah. He is Jannah's Jannah because he's better than Jannah. 
So what is his reward, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The ru'ya, the beatific vision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, what about after the passing of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? As if this makes a difference, a Prophet's maqam with Allah isn't magically annihilated when that Prophet dies. A Prophet's reality with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't suddenly annihilated when he dies, when he physically passes from this world. There is a sound narration in multiple books and confirmed by all of the Salaf. And you'll find it in very popular books. Kitab, Kitab al-Shifa bi Qadi Iyad. Imam al-Nawawi relates it as well. Very famous story that a Bedouin came to the grave of the Prophet Wasallam, And he said, Ya Rasulullah, O oh Messenger of God, I've committed a great sin. And I've heard that Allah said in his book, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَا فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا اللَّهَ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمْ الرَّسُولُ لَوَجَدُوا اللَّهَ تَوَابَ الرَّحِيمَ I've heard Allah say, if only when they had wronged themselves, they came to you. This جَاءُكَا, this kafir khitab, the khitab is the Prophet ﷺ, direct address. He is the one being addressed. Uh, if they had come to you and they had asked Allah for forgiveness and that the messenger had asked Allah for his forgiveness, then they would have found Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relenting and merciful. So the Bedouin said, here I am, O messenger of God. I've asked Allah, now I'm asking you to ask, to ask Allah to forgive me. Of course, he recited the famous poem, Ya khayra man duffinat fi turabi a'adhumuhu. O oh, best of whose bones are buried in the earth. And it continues, Anta al turja shafa'atuhu. Then the Bedouin, he wept and he walked away. And there was a man named Al Utbi, according to the narration, who was in that area and he had seen what had happened. Al Utbi, after some time, he dozes off, he falls asleep. Who should come to him in his dream? The Prophet. Whoever sees me in a dream has seen the truth. So the Prophet tells his man, Go, wake up, go catch up to this Bedouin and tell him, That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven him. The Bedouin brought his sin to the door of mercy and it was opened. The city of mercy remains accessible even after the physical passing of the key to its gate. Without the shafa'a of the Prophet Wasallam, we will be lost. There are extremists who write in their popular books. They write things like the, one of the nawaqidul Islam, one of the nullifiers of one's Islam is taking intercession with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Ajeeb. Who's teaching these people? Good luck on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Wallahi, I don't know what Quran they're reading. They say, no, 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 no. there are ayat in the Quran that reject shafa'a. Ibn Hisham said, you have to look at the Qur'an as a jumla wahida, as a unified totality, as an overall message. Don't start isolating things. Look at the overall message. There's harmonization in the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, يَوْمَ إِذِنْ لَا تَنْفَعُ الشَّفَاعَةُ Yeah, this is half the ayah. لَا تَقْرَبُ salah. That's also half the ayah. Don't pray. There, this intercession will avail no one. That's half the ayah. إِلَّا This is called harful istifna. This is an exception. Except the one, except the one who has given permission from the indiscriminately compassionate and he is well pleased with his speech. Ayatul Kursi, man dalladi yashfa'u indahu illa bi'idhni. Who can intercede with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except the one who has given permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to the sound hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on yawm al-qiyamah, ishfa'atu shafa'ah. This is hadith, sound hadith, Bukhari. Intercede and your intercession will be accepted. What Quran are people reading? What hadith are they reading? In the hadith recorded by Ibn Majah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, yashfa'u yawm al-qiyamati thalathatun al-anbiya'u thumma al-ulama thumma shuhada'u kama qala alayhi salatu wa salam. On the Day of Judgment, three groups of people will intercede in this order. The prophets, then the scholars, then the martyrs. In the hadith of Tirmidhi and Abu Dawood, the Prophet Wasallam, he said, Shafa'ati bi ahl al-kaba'ri min ummati. My intercession is for the people of mortal sin, of grave sin from my ummah. In the hadith in Bukhari, the Prophet Wasallam said, Yakhruju qawmun min al-nar bi shafa'ati Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam fa yadkhunun al-jannah. Aw qama qala alayhi salatu wa sallam. He said that there's a group of people on Yawm al-Qiyamah who pulled out of the fire 
by means of the shafa'ah, the intercession of the Prophet ﷺ, and they enter paradise. The Prophet ﷺ said in Bukhari, لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍّ دَعْوَةً Every Prophet has an uh, invocation. فَأُرِيدُ إِنْشَاءَ اللَّهِ أَنْ أَخْتَبِيَ دَعْوَةِ شَفَاعَةً لِأُمَّةِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَقَمَ قَالَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامِ Every Prophet has an invocation. And I wanted, if Allah wills, to save mine until the day of judgment to intercede for my ummah. In a hadith in Tirmidhi, the Prophet ﷺ was asked about the ayah, عَسَىٰ أَن يَبْعَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَامًا مَحْمُودًا سُئِلَ عَنْ هَذِهِ الْآيَةِ The hadith is in Tirmidhi. What is the meaning of مَقَامْ مَحْمُود? قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ هِيَ أَشْشَفَعَةً This is the intercession. What tafasir are they reading? وَلَا سَوْفَ يُعْتِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى Soon will thy Lord give thee that which will please thee. And Imam Suyuti and many, many other Mufassirin, they say, when the Prophet ﷺ heard this ayah, uh, he said, لَن تَرْضَى لَن تَرْضَى وَوَاحِدُونَ مِنْ أُمَّةِ فِي النَّارِ I will never be pleased, even if one person from my ummah is in the fire. Even if one person. So what did Allah give him? وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْتِيكَ أَعْطَى What did Allah give him? The shafa'ah. This is unanimous. Without the shafa'ah, we are lost. Without the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, we will be lost. Without the sunnah, the Qur'an becomes incomprehensible. The Qur'an is powerful. And without the sunnah wielding it, the Qur'an can become dangerous. This is why he said wasallam, I've left behind me two things. Hold fast to them and you'll never go astray. Kitabullah wa sunnati. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, كَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا فِيكُمْ رَسُولًا مِنْكُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلِيكُمْ آيَاتِنَا وَيُزَكِّيكُمْ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ الْكِتَابُ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمْ مَا لَمْ تَكُونُ تَعْلَمُونَ كَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا فِيكُمْ رَسُولًا فِيكُمْ فِيكُمْ means among them. The Qur'anic ayat have multiple levels of meaning. In the immediate instance, this is a reference to the Arabs, among the Arabs. Right? You're among them. But the Qur'an has multiple levels. There's deeper meanings. The Qur'an is a polyvalent text. There are levels of meaning. The Prophet ﷺ said every ayah of the Qur'an has a dahir and a batin and a had and a maqla. These are different levels of meaning. So fikum can also be translated as in you. This messenger is within you. What is within you? The sunnah, the normative practice, the ethos of the Prophet ﷺ has been appropriated and internalized by the lovers of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why the ulama say, huwa hayyun fi qulubina wa a'malina. He is alive in our hearts and in our actions. Imam al-Shafi'i said that the word hikmah in this ayah, when Allah says, we alimukum al-kitab, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will teach you al-kitab, the Qur'an, wa al-hikmah and the wisdom. Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he said hikmah in this ayah means sunnah. That the word, the word for sunnah in the Qur'an is hikmah, they're interchangeable. The application of the Qur'an. So the Prophet ﷺ, he taught, he taught the Qur'an and its application. The Qur'an must be interpreted through the lens of the sunnah. The, the sunnah is the hermeneutic of the Qur'an, to use a modern uh, academic term. <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيَّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ That indeed we sent down a dhikr, one of the names of the Qur'an. We sent down a dhikr, the reminder, لِتُبَيَّنَا لِلْلَامُ تَعْلِيلِ In order for you to explain, in order for you to explicate for the people what has been revealed to them, and in order for you to ponder Right? To ponder, not to be literalist or simplistic, to think deeply about the Qur'an, guided by the sunnah. The extremists, the mutatarrifin, they only look at what the Qur'an says. They only answer the question, ma huwa, what does the Qur'an say? Right? If there's a nas, okay, there, that, that's what it is. There it is, ma huwa, it's a text. They ignore the why, limada, and the how to implement, the kayfa. This is very, very important. The latter two takes rigorous ijtihad, scholarship, grounded in the sunnah of the Messenger ﷺ. It takes decades. The method of extremism is facile and lazy. The method of impetuous boys. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the Prophet in the Quran by saying, Azizun alayhi ma anittum. It crushes him that you should perish. Harisun alaykum. Deeply concerned is he about you. So the one who is harisun alayna, the one who is deeply concerned about us, is telling us, Man raghiba an sunnati falaysa minni. Whoever turns away from my sunnah, my normative practice, my ethos is not from me. The one who is harisun alayna, the one who is deeply concerned about us, the one who is crushed if we should be, if we should fail. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati al khurafa al rashidin al mahdiyin. I exhort you to follow my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided caliphs who followed me. Tamasaku biha wa addu alayha bin nawajib. Hold on tightly to it and bite into it with your molar teeth. This is what he says. Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi wa sallam. There's a hadith of Aisha, our mother Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha. This is in Tirmidhi. That the Prophet ﷺ said six types of people are cursed. Az-za'idu fi kitab Allah, the one who attempts to add something to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-mukaddibu bi qadr Allah, the one who belies or disbelieves in the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the first two. You get to number six. At-tariku bi sunnati. The one who abandons my sunnah. Why? Because it leads to corruption in the earth. The sunnah personalizes the Qur'an. It provides examples of the universal principles of the Qur'an. They're kulliyat and juziyat, the universals and particulars. You see the minhaj, the textual method of the mutatarrifin, of the extremists, is that they elevate particulars over universals. You see there are particular stories attributed to the Prophet in Sirah and in individual hadith that do not match his universally agreed upon personality, his sunnah. Not everything that is written about him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is true. It's not just, you know, where's the text, where's the nas? No, it takes ijtihad. There's a difference between hadith and sunnah. I mean, there's a crossover, obviously, but there is a difference that's very, very important. The latter, the sunnah, is the normative, universally agreed upon ethos, character, example of the Prophet The sunnah is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to in the Qur'an. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهُ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرُ ذَكَرَ اللَّهُ كَثِيرًا You have in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a beautiful example for anyone who has hope, raja, hope in Allah who has hope in Allah in the last day and makes frequent dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the normative ethos of the Prophet sallallahu that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to when he says, وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَى خُلُوكٍ عَظِيمٍ Verily you dominate magnificent character. This is important. That he is Nabi al-Rahma. He is the Prophet of mercy. And anything particular that contradicts this universal is suspect. Anything that contradicts this universal, the, the, any, any type of particular that contradicts this universal, that he is Nabi al-Rahma, is suspect. It's open to criticism. Because we know his normative ethos. We don't allow people to bring text out of nowhere, this isolated text, this isolated text, and try to defame and character assassinate the Prophet ﷺ. We know the Prophet ﷺ, the most transparent life, life that was ever lived. We know his normative ethos. Generations and generations of scholarship have gone to try to determine what was his character. The Prophet ﷺ said to Anas ibn Malik, this hadith is in Tirmidhi, said, Ya Bunayya, O oh my dear son, this is a term of endearment. If you are able to wake up and go to sleep, لَيْسَ فِي قَلْبِكَ غِشٌ لِأَحَدٍ فَفْعَلْ if, you're, if you are able to wake up and go to sleep and there is not any type of deceit or deception in your heart, then do that. And he said, okay. Ya Bunaya, oh my dear son, وَذَلِكَ min sunnati, And that is from my sunnah. وَمَنْ أَحْيَ sunnati فَقَدْ أَحَبَّنِي And whoever revives my sunnah has loved me. وَمَنْ أَحَبَّنِي كَانَ مَعِي فِي الْجَنَّةِ And whoever loves me will be with me in paradise. Revive a sunnah is not difficult. Abdullah ibn Harith, he said, I never saw anyone smiling more than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
smile, it's sunnah. I went to an MSA meeting one time, all the students had, smile, it's sunnah. And they were wearing them around campus. And the non-Muslims would come and say, what sunnah? Oh, sunnah. What is that? This is the ethos, the character of the Prophet It's easy. I'll close with this, inshallah ta'ala. In Tirmidhi, this is a warning narrated by Ubaidullah ibn Abi Rafi' where he says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi alayhi wa sallam, he said, let me not find one of you muttaki'an ala arikati. Let me not find one of you lounging on his couch. What we say, you know, kicking back in his lazy boy. When I ordered, when I, when a command, I order or a prohibition that comes from me comes to him. In other words, he's lounging and the sunnah comes to him. And he says, لا أدري ما وجدنا في كتاب الله اتبعنا. And he says, what? I don't know. What we find in the book of Allah, we follow it. You see, they want to separate, divorce, sever Allah from his messenger. Again, the Qur'an with respect to its ahkam can be a difficult book. Without the sunnah, one will make a mockery. One can make a mockery of the Qur'an. One can defame the Qur'an. One can cause humanity to revile and flee from the Qur'an. They will misrepresent the Prophet May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to learn al-kitab wal-hikmah. The tawfiq to learn al-Qur'an والسنة أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم توبوا إلى الله يا تواب توب علينا <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله المصطفى وعلى ساداتنا وإمتنا أبي بكر عمر عثمان وعلي ورضي الله تعالى عن أصحاب رسول الله إجمعين يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد أن نقول وأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك حميد في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا الشر ما قضيت اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا واسعا وشفاء من كل داء اللهم إنا نسألك نسألك بنور وجهك الكريم بحقك عليك حسن الخاتم عند الممات لنا ولأحبابنا ولجميع المسلمين يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين ربنا ذلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكنن من الخاسرين يا مقلب القلوب الأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب الأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على طاعتك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين وقيم الصلاة لذكره